Hi teachers, in this session on supporting our newcomers, I'd like to focus specifically on modeling daily routines and some skills that will need to be also modeled using how-to videos or how-to mini lessons with your students. So this is great ideas to use before you even begin focusing on your content. In the, I'm gonna be going over seven ideas here. Now let's get ready to start it. Ready to go? Here we go. Let's begin with reviewing daily uh, expectations and routines. Now, when you are thinking about what those expectations are in your classroom, you have to think about even the beginning, like entering the classroom. I want you to think you're at the beginning, opening your door. What do you want the kids to do when they come in? Is it a certain way to walk in? Oh, are you wanting them to pick up, um, you know, a Chromebook? Are they supposed to be placing something in a basket? Or they just need to go straight to their um, desk and start pulling out a notepad or their computer? Do you want them to start to take notes, or write the objective? What do you want them to do when they enter your classroom? You will need to be very clear and model for our students. Well, how do you want them to begin that work? Is it on their own? Is it going to be working with a partner? Is it going to be done in a specific way, in a specific time slot? What does that look like? You really need to model that. Will they be working um, with you? Will you be having conferencing time your first 10 minutes of your class? So students will be working independently and you'll be calling students um, one by one, maybe two a day to talk to you and sit and have a conference. Uh, are you going to let them know that you're going to be going to them? Will students be already going, you know, working with an instructional aide or with a partner? What does that look like? How will that um, be structured into your day? Have you modeled it? Have you practiced this routine with students? Whatever the task is, I. I will let you know that it is important to model these structures with very, very easy tasks at first. So, and with limited time. So if it is that you're gonna, um, you want to establish that they'll be working with an aide, some kids independent, and you will be conferencing that with them. There's multi things happening there. Um, model how you want them to get started, all of them on task first, maybe writing the daily objective and working on a problem and the and have a timer. Maybe you're gonna say right now, all of you will just be writing your name multiple times. Just write your name, write your name, write your name during this practice time. While you're writing your name, I will call on a student, listen for your name and come up with your notepad and your pencil to my desk. Keep everyone else, keep writing your name, writing your name, writing your name. When you're conferencing with that person, just say, you did a great job coming to my desk and bringing your supplies. This is what it would look like between you and I. I'd probably be with you for the next five minutes, but we're practicing right now for just two. At the same time, everyone's still writing their name, writing their name. You're conferencing with that person that you're just having a very casual conversation with. And then you may also have an instructional aide call uh, a group of students and they will walk up uh, maybe also with their pens and paper and go to a back desk to work with instructional aides where they will just again sit with the instructional aid and they say you did a great job this is exactly what we'll be doing you will need to be bringing your um, work to this back table when I call on you everyone at the same time is still writing their name that is what I mean by practicing that routine um, you need to consider, like, have I established where students will be turning in their assignments? Is that at the beginning of the day? Is that at the end of the day? Is there a place? Is there a way to hand, you know, papers up? Are you collecting them? Is it something that is submitted? Have you modeled how to submit work, uh, you know, digitally? You need to model, model, model. Again, bathroom breaks. What does that look like in your classroom? Do I interrupt the teacher? Do I have just free will to get up and leave a class? Is there a something I need to carry? Is there, you know, something I need to sign? Have you modeled it? Let's not take things for granted. Every uh, class, every teacher in your school has a different um, routine as well. And then finally, leaving the class. What does that look like? Uh, is there an exit ticket? Is there something that 
I'm supposed to be turning in? Am I supposed to be plugging something? Am I supposed to be fixing something, preparing something for the next students? What do I need to do as your student leaving your classroom? Again, I'm saying that we can't take these for things these uh, expectations and routine for granted because we are working with newcomer students, students who have been in different academic settings than a traditional high school in the U.S. So please keep that in mind. Okay. Next thing that I'd like to go over is the number two item, which is teach students what to say when they don't know what to say. And I have here a slide specific to this, um, actually a couple. This one I think we need to do right away. Um, asking for help. Students will need help. Uh, and some students are more vocal and will advocate for themselves and others may not. Might be being shy or not having the right words to ask for the specific help that they need. So on this slide, I have a couple of things for you. Also keep in mind, I have a little finger that's ready to click, click, click to let you know that there is a link on that picture or there's you know something that I need you to press. Model that for your students as well. So that was a side note. Let's start with the um, document that I linked here where there's an arrow and also a finger clicking. This will take you to a document that you can share with your students. I would definitely share, you know, uh, giving them a copy digitally, or if you want to have this um, shared in your classroom on a big poster, uh, you want to have your instructional aide write something out nice and big. But the idea is that you are uh, showing them that you want them to ask for help because it's okay that there will be times where they're going to need that support. And so here I have different ways to ask for for help in different languages as well. So have that in a document for them. Also, when they say they don't know, I don't know, it might be something else that they actually need support when, when you're asking them a question. So I have here some uh, frames that you may want to practice with your student. Hi, here are some phrases that will help you with your learning. In the pink box, and then you could actually play that for them. Um, it's a great way for students to, um, the recording itself is a great way for kids to listen to your directions as well. But specifically for this task to ask for, instead of saying, I don't know, we need to give them that language. They may just need you know, something repeated again. They may just need more information. So teach them the academic terminology to ask for that support. Now the bottom um, text bubbles, the speech bubbles, I think are very, very important and the students will actually appreciate this help. Uh, at the bottom I have here it says, you know, um, I am lost and I am looking for, maybe they need to get to a classroom or another building across campus, a library, teach them how to ask for those um, places teach them the words that they don't know. The middle button, middle button, middle bubble as says, please, can I borrow? Sometimes they're going to ask another student. Maybe they won't ask another teacher or maybe they're going to go to an office and ask for something. You need to teach them how to ask for these simple things that we may take for granted. Um, but uh, you are showing them that you care. And uh, the last one is really important. Can you help me? They're going to need help with very specific things, sometimes very personal things. And it is, um, it would be, uh, you know, uh, such a support for them if you teach them how to let someone know if they're feeling sick or if they're lonely or if they're nervous or that they lost their money they needed to take on the bus teach them the words that they don't know. Teach them these phrases so that they can communicate with um, you, with others, and you are building a relationship because they are seeing how much you care and they, with this, it is you're building trust. Another um, area that you want to teach your students what to say is in your academic um, conversations. Now, again, I have here that the content cannot exist 
alone because it needs a thinking skill. You want them to do something. And you're going to create a, a task for them. They're going to either say it out loud or they're going to write it. But you need to teach them the words that you're expecting them how to do this. So I have here some phrases, these ideas, some objectives. If you want them to do something, if you had, you know, just had, a, you know, you're designing your lesson, you need very specific. What's the objective? What do you want them to do with that? When you say that students will show, well, is that written? And if it's written, how do I say that? If it's said, how do I say it? You need to teach them how to speak and write like a historian, a mathematician, or whatever the task at hand is. So I have here some, um, again, like I said, some uh, objectives that you'll want to consider that maybe these are some, this is what you want them to do. And then I have language frames. Now keep in mind, these language frames, there are many, I and mean, you can find more and more online. This is too much. If you give a student a frame, you know, like this, a page, it's a lot for our newcomers, you know, or for all students. You want to be very specific on the language you're expecting. So teach them, narrow in, show them where specifically, what's the frame they're going to be using in that skill today. Okay. And again, I have more here that are related to content as well. Uh, so take a look at these links that I have provided for you. And also when you are having them speak or write with a frame, and I usually leave a, a line or a dot, 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 you need to model to say at, right here, you're going to add your information, your words. So teach them that. Okay. In the next uh, area of these considerations, um, looking at how we want our students to um, participate in these structured conversations. Well, we've taught them how to, you know, the language that they're going to need, but, you know, how will they do this? Uh, you might be familiar with Kagan structures, um, you know, or partner talk. That's fine. You need to model that. In this next couple of slides, I have a um, way, a structured way of having students participate in, uh, with our, um, in any of your content areas. So, and it's really easy and it's pretty quick. It's called Q Triple S A. So you will state a question, begin with a question, pose that, say it, have it written out so they can see it. And then you're going to provide them with a sentence frame. So the language that they're going to use. Remember, we just showed, saw what um, frames you could possibly use. Then you're going to have the students stand up or give a thumbs up when they can complete their sentence because you gave them time to think about it. We're going to have to write those words within their frame. So when they're ready, prepared, and uh, you're going to signal with them if they um, it can be any signal that you want. So if you want them, again, we're on step three, you want them to stand up or a thumbs up when they can complete the sentence. So what would that look like? I'm ready. I'm good to go, teacher. Is it just standing up? That's what I mean. So again, after the second S, we're on our third S. Now that all the kids are ready, they've all stood up or they're all doing this or they've all put their pencils down, whatever it the signal that you created, now they are ready to share. They are ready to speak. And so that is going to be, a, is it going to be a partner? Is it going to be in a group? Is it around Robin? That's where the third S is going to be your Kagan activity, how you want them to um, share with other people. And finally, the A stands for assessment you're going to be going around and listening. If it's out loud, you're listening. Are you taking notes, um, you know, thinking about what they are saying? That's you're checking for understanding. Are you taking notes on specific that they um, are actually sharing the complete sentence? And so the language, are you also keeping in mind the, the answer that you need in your content? So that's your assessment. These are the steps, question, sentence frame, a signal, students share, and you assess. 
I have here a document that you can use. It's a script, what that would look like for you. Again, the um, QSSA steps are on the left. In the middle, here are some frames you may want to use. And then, of course, the considerations on, you know, um, these whys behind what we're doing. Also, here's some examples of what this would look like in any of these content um, classes. Um, and it would be a great idea if all your newcomer teachers are using the same, same structured um, steps for sharing. So QSSA in all your um, newcomer classes will benefit our students because then they know the process. Um, when you are looking at uh, creating, uh, excuse me, you want your students to participate in structured reading and writing activities. All right, let's look at that. So I have a slide here for different ideas and you're thinking, well, in every class, you are definitely gonna have to have them. Obviously we speak and we want our students to speak and I just shared that. Now, what do we do by reading and writing? Yes, we do that. But how do we go about that? Besides giving the directions of what you expect them to complete, but how is really, how are you sharing the task to do? So all these little circles here that I have here are going to take you to different links to um, ideas that I've shared um, on how I go about that. So for this purple one I already have here, picture this. Um, it is uh, maybe a, and this is really a good idea by having, um, if you want students to be analyzing pictures, a uh, table, uh, you know, uh, graphs, um, if you want them to be looking at a problem. So here is some steps that you might want to consider. How do you go about teaching something like that? Um, you know, the visualizing, what to expect um, when I'm looking at something, I have to use my prior knowledge, my background experiences. And then, so I give a mini lesson. So this is my mini lesson. And then I'm going to show them how I want them to do this steps, complete this task with the book you are currently reading in this, in this one, um, in this, uh, task, this is what I'm going to have them do. And I'll never change my routine. Whatever I'm, whenever I want them to, um, complete a, you know, visualization task from reading, this will always be the steps. And then I have my um, place where I want them to um, turn that work in. All right. I may have, um, here's something else. Uh, it's in regards to music and lyrics, but I want you to think about your content, other videos maybe that you've been sharing, because this is specifically with videos. So something that they've been watching and analyzing. So I have the steps on how I want them to do something. I'm very clear, just the directions on its own and again, modeling. And then I have a place where I have all the videos. Maybe you're going to have one video or um, you're about to show one video, but you're always going to use the same steps when you watch a video. And here I have some ideas like you might have already established your directions. But on the left, I provided what, what is my brain doing? What am I thinking? How am I going to create this um, message, you know, showing my understanding? So again, this is another way of uh, a structured reading activity and writing activity. Here's another notice and wonder again, using that a video that you've shared um, and, or it could be thinking about a picture a problem, notice and wonder. If that's what you want to call it, then always call it this. What do you notice and what do you wonder? What do you notice? What do you wonder? And by using these two words, notice and wonder, you're allowing everyone to participate. You're not just saying, what do you notice and what do you know? You know, you're, then you're, you're only going to get some kids to participate because I may not know the answer. I may not know what you want me to say but I have wonderings happening. I have questions, I have ideas. So that's what you want. You want all kids to participate in this activity. So in here, uh, on, on these slides, you're gonna notice that I have um, what the expectations, they're gonna sh watch a short video. They're going, again, 
I'm always wondering, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Also using my TPR, what do you notice, what do you wonder? And then I want them to reflect and share. I will always have these frames and I will always have the same expectations when we do this task. Um, down below, I have many videos um, that I use in all content areas as well, but um, they're there for you. That, again, these slides are just examples. Finally, uh, one of the bubbles here um, that I have posted, let me go back. This one, compare and evaluate. This one was I have shared in a previous um, what's brewing update that I shared last year. And this one um, shows you some ideas that we made um, when we were doing things online uh, that I use interactive slides. But I want you to think about them and whether they're digital or online, but they're still tasks that you're most likely going to have kids do. And one of the skills we often have our students do in, in our content classes is compare and contrast. Here I have a Venn diagram where we would possibly just provide a Venn diagram and ask them to do something. But what I've done in this uh, uh, slide is color coded. On color coding, I'm able to then understand that they're, you know, I'm comparing, I can easily see what two different things I'm comparing, contrasting. So for this one, students were, or teachers, whatever the task was, it was asked to uh, compare and contrast one another. So people, think about characters or, or um, people in politics. So um, I have here my name. This is going to be my side of the slide, whereas my partner's is this side of the slide. I've color coded so we know what parts of the diagram to use. Because even using a diagram where we take for granted that all students should have been able to do something like this because we've seen it in our academic background at some time, that may not be the case for our newcomers. So even something like this is like, what do you want me to do? I know what circles are, but what, what the heck? What is this? I may not, I may know how to compare and contrast because I know, obviously I should know how to compare and contrast all of our, even a child will know, I want, you know, the bigger cookie than the smaller cookie. So they know the skill, but in the academic uh, platform and you, you know, that you as your teacher asking them to use a specific tool, you need to model the tool, not take for granted that the kids know how to do this. So again, color coding is very uh, important modeling, using the thinking frames, and also the language frames will help when going back and forth to um, compare and contrast. There are many um, other um, templates in this one for compare and contrast. I have math. I have uh, frames for literature and comparing using a, you know, a thinking bubble, excuse me, um, Yes, a thinking map bubble for, you know, describing and for comparing and contrasting um, that would benefit your students as well in case you don't want to use a Venn diagram and this is something else that you would rather, rather use, then use that. But be consistent. Please be consistent. Um, the other um, things I share here are thinking maps that you can use as well. There's one for science. This one is a really good one specific for our um, history teachers. Um, and all of these will lend itself to getting students to participate because you're providing uh, visuals, language frames, and an opportunity to share their ideas. And so that is here in this section. Finally, let's go back up to, um, sorry, this is lengthy, but here we go. Um, creating consistent total response signals, TPR signals. You need to develop them for, especially uh, for your newcomers, because they're looking at you right now and they need clues on what you like. Stop, yeah, uh, listen, speak. Elaborate, tell me more, tell me more, look closely, um, highlight. All these are really important. Uh, TPR, total physical response signals, are so important for our students. They need that. And if you can keep them consistent always, it's only going to benefit them. Um, 
And then in general, when you're using, um, when you want modeling and you want them to use different tools, you need to show what you mean by that with you, not only in speaking. So for instance, I might say, all right, guys, so I have on your desk some sticky notes that I'm going to want you to, um, you know, write your name and then I want you to post it in your notebook. Okay. Well, you have them on the desk and you're assuming that they know what to do with a sticky note, but maybe they have never seen sticky notes or know that these sticky notes is the word for this. You're going to have to tell them, take out your sticky notes. You're going to take one and you're going to write your name. Then take out your notebook and you're going to want to place your sticky note where it's hanging off the side so that this will serve as a tab. Next one, and you'll model. So those are the simple things you're going to need to do. Um, also, highlight. I know we're used to highlighting, you know, uh, something, but you need to say, take this is the time you thought. Now you're going to highlight. Highlight, everyone. Highlight so that they need to know. Highlight, important words. Annotate. Annotate, important words. Write your thought. Those are the things you're going to need to do when you are speaking um, to your newcomers and um, providing them with those extra supports. These are the little things that make the difference between a newcomer and an e uh, a student who um, first language is English. You know, so these are the little com not only just creating, uh, you know, differentiated assignments or, you know, it, you're, it's actually how you are sharing these um, tasks with your students. Okay. Now I'm um, looking at uh, using visuals and vocabulary strategies that support the objective. Again, thinking about what you want your students to do with the vocabulary. And I have a um, lessons on vocabulary strategies for you that um, you can find in my What's Brewing um, resources, which is also linked at the last page of this slide. But um, definitely thinking about um, what you want, where do you want your students as simple as where are you having them write their vocabulary uh, words, if you're having them do that. Um, sometimes those, again, going back to the Venn diagram, the tools that we're using for our students for vocabulary lessons, they may not be familiar with. And then on top of that, you have every newcomer, every class that they go to, they're all using different ones. If you could also come up with a consistent way of having students practice the vocabulary words, then that is going to be very, very helpful to them because they're not having to do different things with um, taking notes on vocabulary. Um, using our visuals and key uh, TPR as well when you're sharing directions is really important. Finally, let me go to number seven, which is practicing using tech tools, um, apps, and websites. One thing we've learned during distance learning is that a lot of students struggled um, with technology. Everyone comes with different background and experience um, in this area of technology, even yourself and at your peers. Just because I have a smartphone doesn't mean that I can do the things that you're asking me to do from your class. So for instance, I might know how to, you know, Google search on my phone. I'll go to YouTube, use my, you know, call, use my WhatsApp, uh, post a TikTok. But I may not know how to annotate a document. I may not know how to open Google Classroom. I may not know how to create a document um, or submit my work. Ask yourself these questions. Will you be having your students use technology in your classroom? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to tell you this. Teach them now. Teach them how to do these things in case we do have to go back to distance learning. God forbid that. But in case we had to. They're in your class right now. So take advantage of this right now. Teach them the tech skills that they need to be able to do 
tech, you know, to use technology in an academic setting. I have here linked for you how to videos that your students can access that you can share with them um, in case you're like, well, how do I teach them how to annotate? Well, I created a video already for you. Um, on this slide, um, slide two, I have different um, links to these videos. So how to annotate a text in Google Doc. You could just simply go to that slide. I have here these specific directions and then a video for them. Um, I have how to use Google Classroom, um, how to add a link in a Google slide. All these things that I'm going to keep on adding to this as well, but it's very important and not to take this for granted with your students. So again, think about what you want them to do, what technology you want them to use in your class, what apps, what websites, what they need to access and use, and you need to model and practice and have them apply it and use it in your class in front of you. Because if they're not, we're just assuming enough that they have this academic skill. And we can't do that. We cannot assume. All right, everyone. I think that that was it for this section. I hope this was helpful to you. I do have one last thing here in this blue circle here. It says use the three to one method. We use this during distance learning uh, for all students. After three minutes of you teaching and giving content um, input, then you need to have your students do something. Check for understanding by having them click, create, type, talk, or move. And these five things are also very important teaching in person to newcomers. They need that brain break. They need to process. They need to practice. They need to try. Implement this in your class so that students could stay focused, keep stay with you, and it gives you a great way for checking for understanding. Now I'm done. I hope this is helpful and to the next one. All right, thank you.